Hello and welcome to video one of the chapter on nutrition and metabolism. And we're going to start off with nutrition. So a bunch of you are what you eat stuff. Uh, so what are nutrients? Well, they're things that you eat and they uh, are in food. They're, they make up your food. Um, they, you know, basically you are what you eat, really. I mean, every piece of you was originally a piece of food that had been broken down and rebuilt into you. So even though if you cut yourself open, you're not going to find an apple or a chicken leg or anything like that, you will, you're still made of those same uh, molecules. But in any case, that's a little philosophical. So let's look at uh, the two different types. We have macronutrients, which are the big ones. And these are the ones we hear, think about when we think of food. We think of carbs, lipids, and proteins. And uh, micronutrients, which are uh, vitamins and minerals. Um, you, the amounts you need of, of vitamins and minerals are on the milligram level or microgram level. Per day, whereas uh, for carbohydrates, lips, and proteins, you're eating grams, uh, dozens of grams or more of each. So mar macronutrients, uh, carbs first, and you may be familiar with this from uh, by, from ANP one, but you have monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. So they're varying degrees of complexity. Uh, Glucose is a monosaccharide, and it's kind of your main molecule that we use when we want to uh, synthesize ATP, when we want to use a food molecule for energy. Cellulose is what we call dietary fiber, and it is a, uh, it's indigestible by vertebrates. So when you eat cellulose, when you eat plant material that has fiber in it, has this cellulose in it, it goes right through your digestive system. And this is kind of a, a thing that we've co-evolved with our food to do. Um, as as uh, vertebrates can't digest that, they uh, they basically evolved to use it as a um, kind of a pipe cleaner. And now, if we don't get enough cellulose in our diet, if we don't get enough fiber in our diet, that can lead to some digestive problems, some some illnesses like uh, colon cancer and so on. You may have heard of soluble fiber or pectin, and this is kind of like a plant uh, uh, like. Fruit, sh fruit sugar, kind of, but it's a um, molecule that you can dissolve in water and it helps you lower your blood cholesterol. My dog is walking around in here so you can hear little toenails in the background, but I guess I'll deal with it. Uh, carbs can be converted. Um, sorry, glucose can be converted into glycogen, which is a carb, and uh, lipids, but you can actually do lots of conversions, which we'll look at later. All right, lipids or fats, a uh, few different classes of them. The most common ones are these triglycerides. These are the ones that we're going to be, that's when you eat something that has fat, that's what mostly it is. So oils, butter, uh, animal fat, that's mostly triglycerides. Phospholipids make up most of our plasma membranes, and steroids uh, act as hormones and uh, chemical messengers and, and some other stuff. New slide, I hope. Anytime. All right. Proteins. Uh, they can be classed as either complete or incomplete, depending on if they've got all of the uh, essential amino acids or not. So if a protein has all of the essential amino acids, those are amino acids that you have to eat. You can't make them yourself. Then it is a complete protein. If it's missing one or more of them, then it is an incomplete protein. So for instance, the protein that you get in corn is incomplete because it's missing isoleucine and lysine. You don't have to remember any of these. The protein you get in, or proteins you get in beans, are is also are also incomplete because you get you're missing uh, tryptophan and uh, methionine. But in together, uh, they have they form a complete protein. So if you when you were a little baby, you couldn't make these last two. So you had ten essential amino acids, and as an adult, you you uh, your body figures out how to make these last two: histidine and arginine. Again, don't have to know those, uh, so we only have eight. Now, the term essential is a little iffy because it sounds like essential is needed, right? All of the other 20 amino acids, or uh, sorry, 12, I should say, that we need, um, eight are essential, 12 we can make. They're all needed. If you can't make one of those, if you've got a metabolic disorder where you can't make one of those non-essential amino acids, you're going to have to eat it because uh, you can't make all your proteins without all of your amino acids. Uh, okay, micronutrients are vitamins and minerals, 
Uh, we're familiar with these from either the vitamin jar or the uh, the the nutrition information on the side of your cereal box. Um, but the main difference here is that vitamins are organic and somewhat usually larger molecules and minerals are inorganic and often just single atoms. Sometimes they're incorporated in larger molecules, but then we just want that mineral, that one elemental portion of them. Well, vitamins act here, I say, as coenzymes. Well, we know what a co we know what an enzyme does. An enzyme catalyzes a reaction, okay? It'll, it'll make the reaction go smoother, go quicker, go easier. Coenzymes are kind of like helpers for enzymes. So they're gonna be things that will enable enzymes to function at their full capacity or sometimes just to function. Uh, we can make some of these vitamins. We've talked about vitamin D being made by your skin and we've already talked about vitamins B and K being made by bacteria in your gut. Vitamins can be classed as uh, either fat soluble or water soluble. And if you look at the side of your vitamin, uh, sorry, your cereal box, or whatever, you see like there's lots of B vitamins, right? So B complex just means that there's more than one specific B vitamin. The B complex vitamins and vitamin C are all water soluble. You can, you can eat a lot of those. You can have more than you need and you will dissolve it and get rid of it in your urine. Fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, are absorbed with lipids. They dissolve in lipids and you can store them in lipids in your body. So you can actually get toxic concentrations of those fat soluble vitamins if you eat too many of them. So, you know, don't uh, super dose up on uh, vitamin D. Whereas if you do it with vitamin C, you're just going to have expensive urine. Um, <clears throat> antioxidants are, include these three vitamins, A, C, and E, and the mineral, selenium. I just put it in here because it's a mineral, but know those four. Those guys are the ones that uh, capture these free radicals, these things that will oxidize tissues and damage your cells. So having good uh, supply of those is going to be uh, beneficial for you. Anyway, minerals, inorganic, like I mentioned. Uh, they have lots of jobs here, you can read. Uh, they also act as cofactors, which kind of is like a coenzyme, except it's a, with a mineral. So they're going to aid enzyme activity as well. Uh, okay, there are seven major minerals and ten trace minerals. I should have put the number seven there, but seven major minerals, ten trace minerals that you barely need any of. If you look at some of these vitamin uh, bottles or whatever, you know, micronutrients or whatever they call them, you're going to have some minerals that aren't on this list. This list, this list, which I've clicked. Here it comes. Any second now, there it is. Um, now, don't get scared. See right here, don't memorize these tables. Uh, here's our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven major minerals, and then these are the trace minerals. Don't commit uh, these guys to memory. You do have to know which ones are, are fat soluble over here. And you should know which ones are major minerals. Okay, so know these two things. And if you can learn A, D, E, K, that's easy right there. And then calcium phosphorus, think up a mnemonic for it. If I mention a mineral that's not one of these, one of these seven, then you'll know it's a trace mineral. Now, just because they're trace doesn't mean that they're not important. Wait, doesn't mean that they're not important. Just because they're traced doesn't mean that they're not important. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So iron, right? Uh, if you just lost your iron right now, you'd be dead. If you took all the iron out of your body, you'd be dead. If you have an iron shortage, you're anemic, uh, one type of anemia. And, you know, you can die from that. You can die from a lack of iodine. You can die from a lack of uh, zinc. So lots of these things you need, but you just need tiny, tiny bits. All right, well, that's video one. The next uh, video will... Uh, go, we'll start on metabolism.